There are so many different motion picture cameras available. All have a varied degree of dynamic range. But what exactly is dynamic range? How important is it? How can we use it if we have it? And how can we get around not having it? Currently, no camera has the dynamic range of the human eye. If you look at this grayscale, you should be able to see every shade of gray, but a camera sensor cannot. The more of the grayscale the sensor can see, the wider the dynamic range. Many cameras will clip out around here, not being able to catch much detail in high white areas. By bringing down the exposure to catch the detail in the high whites, you will lose the detail in your shadows, becoming solid black. This bright to dark limit is your dynamic range. To ascertain the dynamic range of your camera, you can bench test it against another. I did this recently to compare the dynamic range of two action cameras. I shot the same grayscale with the same light and camera setting. I marked the point where the grayscale merged to solid black and white on each camera. The distance between the lines is a rough representation of the camera's dynamic range. There is a characteristic of all data sensors that needs to be explained and that is the parameters of the data format. Looking at this picture, we can see there is almost no detail in the dark areas of the trees. Just a little more exposure would have given so much more detail to this shot, but the exposure is as high as it can go because the white clouds are at the edge of the camera's range. They are about to clip or go beyond the limit this camera has to maintain detail in its whites. Any more exposure and the clouds will lose detail. So you have to choose no detail in the trees or no detail in the clouds. The parameters of data sensors are indicated on this away from monitor using the IRE scale. This is the IRE scale. Zero IRE is absolute black. 100 IRE is absolute white. Your darkest blacks should sit on the zero line and your brightest whites should sit on the 100 line. If your blacks go below zero IRE, this is known as crushing. If they go over 100 IRE, this is known as clipping. These are the parameters of the data format. There is no detail beyond these limits and going beyond them will make your images look like video and they will lose that filmic look that we are all striving to achieve. They will also not be broadcast legal if you intend to broadcast your work on TV. There is currently no sensor that does not clip. This information is very important when trying to ascertain the dynamic range of your camera. Let's look at this shot that needs a very wide dynamic range and let's assume it was shot with this much dynamic range. Notice the high blacks, capturing much detail in the shadow areas, also the detail in the buildings, that are obviously much brighter than the interior foreground. I would estimate the exposures on this shot would range from f16 outside the window to f4 inside. That range would make it hard to capture detail in both exposures. If we look at the exposure on the waveform monitor, we can see the blacks are quite high and far from crushing. The whites are also not yet touching the 100 IRE, ensuring we have detail in our bright whites. This shot has a very good dynamic range, and we will have a lot of latitude when grading. I can bring my blacks down to zero IRE and still maintain plenty of detail in the shadows. I can then stretch my whites up to 100 IRE and still see buildings in the background. So I can now grade this any way I would like. I can darken the foreground and blow out the background. Or, if the background was important, I can save a lot of the detail in the buildings. Or, I could mix the two. Or, silhouette the foreground, forcing attention on the background. Or, brighten the foreground, blowing out the background, drawing attention to the foreground. But all within my clip and crush parameters. Now, what would happen if I shot it with a dynamic range like this, only giving me the option of clipping whites or crushing blacks? A compromise exposure would look like this. Notice the whites are still clipping leaving no detail through the window. The shot does not look bad at all, and it has a good strong contrast, similar to the contrast you would expect from a DSLR. But if I want to save detail and see the buildings, no matter how I try to grade down the whites, there is no information in the window at all. It's being clipped out. This is the limitation of digital sensors. I have not shot a project on film for several years and I do miss it. I do not believe that film is superior to data, but it is different. One great advantage it had was its ability to hold detail. This is a film commercial I shot in the mid-90s. It's interesting because of the wide exposure ratio I was dealing with. Shot in the bright desert, the exposures inside the van were much lower than the exposures outside the van. 
To get a balanced exposure in this shot, I would need to apply some heavy exposure techniques, as trying to shoot this with available light and no techniques would result in silhouette actors or blown out backgrounds. For this shot, I put ND9 lighting gel on the front windshield and both side windows. This knocked down the exposure of the background by three stops. I left the rest of the windows clear and placed a white reflector flat on the floor of the van, behind the actors to fill in their faces. This balanced the exposure enough for the color grader to match the detail when we graded. This would be exactly the same technique I would use in data. However, in this shot, notice the light on the mirror and the clips through the window. They are totally blown out, but they do not clip. If we look at the waveform, we can see the whites are all well below the 100 IRE limit, yet they are extremely blown out. This is because film does not clip. When it hits its limit of maximum white, the film becomes totally transparent. It cannot be more than totally transparent. So, if I let the whites blow out in the background, they will never be more than transparent. The telecine machine that converts film to data is set to recognize transparent film as just below 100 IRE. So film never clips, regardless how much you overexpose it. This is why people believe film has more dynamic range than data. I find a good data camera can actually have a far superior dynamic range, particularly in holding detail in dark areas. Film just does not clip, so you can overexpose it with little consequence. Thus, you can safely bring up the exposures of your shadow areas. If this was shot on data, the mirror and other overexposed elements would have to be exposed only up to the edge of clip, bringing down the overall exposure, crushing my blacks. Thus, I would have to apply more techniques to the shot to balance the exposure of these elements, or work with the camera with the widest dynamic range to get the best ratio between my clip and crush. The wider your dynamic range, the less you will have to deal with the parameters of clipping and crushing. The narrower your dynamic range, the more techniques you will have to use to limit your clipping. This is an ad I shot recently using Red Epic. This ad also pushed the limits of the camera's dynamic range, particularly in this shot. The director wanted the sun coming through the branches of the tree, and he also wanted the van and the actor to have detail in their shadows, so the product poster placed on the side of the truck could be seen clearly. This would have an enormous exposure ratio, probably from f32 around the sun to f2.8 on the shadow side of the van. Both would have to be well enough exposed to contain maximum detail. I realized that I would have to use many techniques to capture this frame. Now I like red cameras, but dynamic range is not this camera's strongest point. The Ari Alexa has a much wider dynamic range and would give me more latitude during grading, but I went with the Epic because it has excellent HDRX. This frame was shot using HDRX. Notice the huge ratio between the dark detail in the barn and the bright detail in the distant landscape, yet both have clear and defined detail. No camera currently has a dynamic range to capture this ratio without exposure techniques. HDRX captures two images of different exposures at the same time. It does this by applying a faster shutter speed to the second capture, reducing its exposure. This example has a subtle difference between the two frames, just enough to maintain the detail in the sky, probably two stops. In grading, these two images can be combined to give the colorist more latitude, simply by dissolving from one image to the other. Complex grading can isolate areas of the frame and replace them with the material of the lower exposure, allowing you to have two different exposures on the same frame. You can now grade all the detail you need from both files, giving you incredible latitude to your shots. Because of the huge ratio on this frame, I used HDRX to maintain the detail in the very bright area with the rising sun and the shadow area on the van. If the distance between the two exposures is too great, the final composite will not look real and the two exposures will become obvious. So, I used a graduated ND filter to knock down the brightness of the sky by two stops. I also put a large 20x20 white reflector just off the right side of this frame to bounce back some of the light from the sun to brighten up the shadow area by one stop. I also used two 4x4 silver reflectors aimed at the talent and the side of the van, picking these two elements up another stop, leaving only three stops between the sky and the shadow. 
I shot HDRX with my exposures two stops apart, resulting in detail in the shadow side of the van and detail in the branches of the tree with the rising sun behind. Without these techniques, the exposure on the truck would be similar to the exposure on the shadow area of the grass, here, and this shot would not have worked. I hope this film has helped explain dynamic range and shown how techniques can combat the lack of it.